we want to, uh, I'm happy uh, that Pastor Newsom and Lady Pam was able to get away uh, to celebrate uh, their anniversary on today. Amen. Uh, my pastor rarely asked me Amen. to do anything for him. So of course when he asked, I had to say yes. Amen. Uh, didn't really want to, but <laughs> amen. amen. But uh, we, we certainly hope that they are sharing uh, a wonderful time as they celebrate. We also want to celebrate uh, and just congratulate and ask your prayers for the other couples that are celebrating their anniversary in this month of September. Kim and Mike, how many years has it been for you? Huh? Sixty. Oh my goodness, 16, right amen. So we want to congratulate Kim and uh, Mike for celebrating their 16. And I found out uh, that Friday that my son and my daughter uh, are celebrating their 18. Amen. Anniversary this year, I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh. <laughs> But uh, we are grateful to God to, uh, for marriage and for couples being able to celebrate and share yes. in such longevity. Uh, God uh, it has blessed, and I, amen, marriages are under assault. And longevity, I think, is the one thing uh, that... Uh, Satan would really try to get in the midst of. So we, we certainly congratulate uh, those couples and ask that you, uh, when you uh, are praying, you think about it, just say, God bless married couples. Amen. 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 They really need uh, prayer. Okay, so let us uh, look to the Lord as we have prayer. Father, we are so grateful to you as we come into your presence this morning, just thanking you for this time of worship uh, that we have. We thank you for the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. And we say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome yeah. in this yeah. place. Yeah. We thank you Holy Spirit, for being our comforter, for being our paraclete, for thank you for being with us on today. We thank you for the spirit of truth. Yes, God. Thank you, Father, for you said, when you went away, you said that you would Send someone in your place. So we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father God, for you've already blessed someone in this place on today. And we thank you for what you're getting ready to do. Help us to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding, yeah and yeah. trusting yeah. in your word. Yes, God. Continue to bless us that we might be a blessing to someone else. Father God, would you use your word on today to speak into someone's life, speak into someone's situation today. Heal and deliver in this place. We thank you, oh God, for keeping us and uh, you've kept us safe from our danger and harm, and we just give you praise and glory. Uh, you've healed, and you've uh, lifted up, and you've uh, uh, just blessed in so many different ways. And we realize that you didn't have to, but you did, and we give you praise and glory. We thank you for this time that we have to look into your word and pray that it would be a blessing to our life and 
pray that we would not uh, just hear it, but we would be doers of your word. We greet you, Father God. We just, this morning, we just thank you and we bless you. Now, Father, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And until the real preacher comes, would you use me on today? Amen, amen, amen. 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 It is, again, a privilege for me to greet you in the name of our Christ on today as I stand to say that God is truly good. I do uh, ask your prayers on today. Uh, just uh, just uh, would you pray uh, for me, for my strength. Uh, uh, I thank you, God, for what you've already done. Um, in a, a book, uh, by Tim Hansel. He wrote this book called You Gotta Keep Dancing. And, and there's a quote in this book, and he says that all of our theology, what we believe, all of our theology eventually must become our biography that all of what we believe must eventually become who I am. With all the constraints and the challenges that we have in this world, diseases, pain, trouble, tribulation, trials, tests, traumas that we face in life, we are going to have to be able to move what we believe to our everyday life. What I believe to be true about God, I'm going to have to believe, move that to how I live. Oh. So then, theoretically, if I believe that no good thing would he withhold from me. Yeah. Would I ever covet what you have? Wow. <laughs> if I believe it, would I ever covet what you have? If I really, really believe that no good thing will he withhold from me. Would I ever want what you have? If I believe that God, that there's nothing good that he will hold from me. If I really, really believe the word of God that says he will never leave me nor forsake me. Come on. Come on. Would I ever be afraid? Yeah. Uh, mm. If I really believe yeah. that he's with me, would I ever be afraid? In other words, at some point in time, we are going to come to a crossroads in life where it will be about what it is I really believe to be of value in this life. I will be forced to make a choice about what I believe to really be of value in this life. And what I really believe to be true about Jesus Christ. Some of the stuff that I say about Jesus.
Jesus Christ. Do I really believe that? I will either have a breakdown or a breakthrough mm. in my life. It may not be a specific moment in time. It might be a crisis moment, mm -hmm. but generally it's a realization that being a Christian is serious, it's important, it's fascinating, it's adventure, adventurous. When I come to really believe that life is precious, that life is short, that life is sacred, and life is very difficult. Pray for us, boy. Someone said perhaps that the thing that creates the greatest and the deepest sadness is to watch people carefully miss the miracle of being alive. this 
know what it is. And we drag ourselves through life, not enjoying the beauty yes. of life, yes. not telling one another, I appreciate you. I love you. I know life aches and pains and troubles and tragedies. But when we think about it, the pain and consequential suffering that we have in this world is unavoidable. But that does not outrank God's desire and ability yeah. to yeah. work things out for our good. Yes. I, I, I know the way we do the welcome here. Some people find that in, uncomfortable. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's just our way of saying, That's right. you know, that. touch somebody. Yeah, that's right. Just tell them hi. Yeah. Just smile at them. If you don't like the move, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> just smile. Just look at them and smile. Go. Wave at them. Go. Yeah. You will never have the moment Again. Yeah, yeah. preach. <laughs> wow. Just saying, I'm glad to see you today. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes. So we shall not, we will not take our time like I want to share one more quote with you uh, from Helen Keller might have heard of her. She was born in the late 18, 1800s, about around 1880, but she lived to, to 1950 or 60 or something like that. But anyway, she was, uh, she was struck deaf and blind at the age of two. But she went on to become the first woman, disabled woman, to uh, receive a bachelor's degree. And, and so after losing her sight, she went on to write books and do a whole bunch of stuff. But uh, she, she said something that I want to quote to you. She said, the panorama of color and action which fills the world is taken for granted. It is a great pity that in this world of life, the gift of sight is used for mere convenience. I want to, I've never done this before. I want to recommend, if you have not seen the Overcomers movie, recommend that you see it. And if you ever, if you have uh, teenagers or young people, I would especially recommend that you see it. And I would, if you have a child in sports, I definitely would recommend <laughs> that you see it. But anyway, the tragedy that we, sometimes, we have to experience tragedy, I believe, before we can uh, experience life. And value what it is to know Christ. And so I have to move on, uh, because we, we should be out here in good time today. But it, 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 it is short today. Uh, but think about what it would be like if we could wake up every morning and if we were able to get out of bed, get out of bed and say, good morning, Lord. Mm. I, I thank you for this day. Because I know nothing is going to happen to me today that you, mostly you, and I cannot handle. Oh, look out. 
So I was doing that this morning. I got out of bed, and I was like, thank you, Lord. I, I, I was excited about preaching, and I was like, thank you, Lord. And then my phone was beeping, and I was like, okay, give me a minute, give me a minute. I'm going to get to it, I'm going to get to it. And my son came downstairs, and Miss Pat was on the phone. And she was saying she couldn't teach Sunday school. <laughs> And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I can't handle, uh, nothing I can't handle? <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> Never done that before either, preach the house on the school. Okay, I want to preach to you today about the value of knowing Christ. The value of knowing Christ. And one of the things about our text today, Paul has got it. He's got that. He's got the value of knowing Christ. And so our scripture, we read uh, verses 1 through 11 today. But I'm only going to look at verses, actually, I'm only going to look at verses 7 through, 7 through 11. And so let me give you a little breakdown on the background before we move on. After the writing of the scripture today, Paul was in prison. And Paul is incarcerated for preaching the gospel. And here he writes uh, this letter to the church at Philippi, the letter known as Philippians. And at the time of his writing, he doesn't know whether he is going to be killed or set free. Um, he's writing them to thank them because they had sent him a gift. And because the Philippian church was really suffering. And so he wanted to encourage them and he wanted to try to encourage them to be happy in spite of their suffering and rejoice in the Lord. Which would be a tall order, order for the church because they were really suffering under the persecution of Rome and, and, and just trying to be Christian. Now Paul, as you know, a lot about Paul because we preach a lot about Paul, but Paul had been a persecutor and a murderer of Christians. He had been a hot shot. He was really tough stuff. When you go back and you look at verses 4 in Philippians 3, and he's talking about, we read some of it today, he's talking about if anybody has anything to brag about, it would be me. And he talks about his pedigree, you know, that he had the right pedigree. He was circumcised on the eighth day. Uh, he was born on the right side of the tracks. He was from the esteemed tribe of Benjamin. He was a Hebrew child of a Hebrew parents. He had moved from the bottom to the top of his job. Started as a private. Now he's a captain. Now he just wasn't persecuting one or two Christians. He would take the initiative and ask to go and kill Christians. He killed men, women, uh, and boys and girls because they were Christians. He was the top persecutor. And Paul was saying, I can tell you from experience, I've had it all. I've had fame. I've had prestige. I've had money. I've lived in a nice house. I've had a Jaguar chariot. <laughs> 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 I've had top of the line stuff <laughs> but my first point is but now my perspective how I see things has changed mm -hmm. so when you talk about that crossroads my sisters and brothers what happens to you is your perspective changes. How you see this life 
chambers. In order to have a lasting value of Jesus Christ, our perspective must change. So let's look at verses 7 and 8. But Christ has shown me that what I once thought was valuable is worthless. Christ had shown him what I once thought was valuable is worthless. Nothing is as wonderful as knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. I have given up everything else and counted all as garbage. All I want is Christ. Look at this. To have a proper perspective on life, when you have a proper perspective in life, it changes what you value yeah. in life. And for Paul, that was, he valued more than anything else, knowing Christ in a deep and personal way. How many of us know that Christ has a way of changing your perspective yes. Yes. on life by showing us some stuff? Yes. Paul said, Christ has shown me what I once thought was important is now worth nothing. It's worthless. I don't know, maybe it was on the Damascus Road when he was delivered from one of the, or maybe it was one of the times he was delivered from being in prison. Maybe it was the night they were praying in jail. And the angel came and caused the jail to rock. Or maybe it was a time that God had delivered them when he was trying to get to Rome. And he told the ship captain, not to set sail. They didn't listen. And the ship almost sank. God showed up and showed Paul his greatness. Maybe it was a time when Paul was in Thessalonica. Maybe it was a time he was forced out of Berea. Maybe it was a time in Athens. Maybe it was a time when they tried to kill him or the time the snake bit, bit him. But God had shown Paul his great. <coughs> God had shown him, shown Paul his glory. God had showed up in Paul's life and showed him his greatness. In the storms, he had faced. God had been there with him. In the valleys he'd been in, God had been there with him. What God had shown Paul had changed his perspective. Mm. And he looked at life more different, looked at life differently now. And he said, I found you, knowing Christ, more than anything else. Paul had come to understand that problems are the fabric of our story. Yes. It is how we look at them and respond to them that is life. <laughs> to know Christ and to value Christ yeah. is to have the proper perspective. Yes. We're not going to get out of this life without problems and troubles. But it's how we look at them yes. and how we respond to them. You see, when you come to that crossroads and you have a breakthrough, your value system changes. And that's the path of spiritual maturity. What things you counted before as so important means nothing mm. Yeah. Another great tragedy in life is we see so many people spend their whole life waiting for this or for that before something they think is going to make them happy. 
if I can just do this, if I can just get that, if I could just lose weight. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Robert Troy, we feel you. <laughs> Say mm. you don't have to wait. And some things we do have to wait. But while you wait, live life. Yeah. While you wait, value life. Mm. And while you wait, put all your W-E-I-G-H-T on and W-A-I-T on Jesus Christ. Yes. Far too many of us believe for my circumstances change. Then I will live when knowing Christ is right in your grasp right now. You miss life for something you already have. So many people waiting on somebody to like them, waiting on somebody to love them. When Jesus said, I love you with yeah, an everlasting yeah, love. Yeah, yeah. Others you, not Jesus. liking you is not the problem. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe it's you not liking yourself. Mm. Let Christ oh, show you the greatness <laughs> of our God. Yes. Christ will change your perspective. My advice, if you're waiting on somebody to like you, or if you think you can move over here and maybe they'll like me, well, when you get over there, then they're not going to like you either. My advice to you is to bloom where you're planted. Yes. Yeah. Wow. To value life, mm. we have to have mm. the proper perspective. Yes. And then number two, number two, we have to know our position in Christ. Verse 9 says, and to know that I belong to him. There it is right there. I cannot make myself acceptable to God. God accept me simply because of my faith. Paul says, I belong to him based on my faith. I know I could do nothing to make myself acceptable. Yes. I know for me, for some folks, I don't care how many hoops I jump through. I don't care how high I jump. Mm. You know you're not going to please them. For some folk, I don't care how much you buy them. I don't care how much you give them. They're still going to be ungrateful. But look at this. My sisters and brothers, God accepted me based on my faith. I didn't have to fix my clothes up. I didn't have to have a certain kind of clothes. I didn't have to straighten my nappy hair. All right. I didn't have to stand up straight. Yeah. But because of the price that he paid for me on Calvary. My sisters and brothers, I didn't have to do community service. I didn't have to pay restitution. He loves me unconditionally. Thank you, Lord. Mm. I'm sorry that I don't please you all the time. But my sisters and brothers are doing my best to please him. Yes, yes. Mm. This one thing I know, I'm a winner. <laughs> Thank I think you, Jimmy said it early, I'm a winner. Yes. In Christ, I'm more than a conqueror. My sisters and brothers, we said it this morning in Sunday school that if God be for me. Yeah. He is more than the world against me. I know. <coughs> Woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus because I know I'm the apple of his eye. Yes. <coughs> I know he picked me to be on his team. I know that I belong to Jesus Christ based on my faith. Paul says I belong to him. Yeah. And in order for your 
for you to value life, you must know your position in Christ. And then two, I mean three, I encourage you, my sister and brother, this morning to consider what it is you value in life. What is it that is your true desire in life? What is it you want out of this brief, precious time here we have on planet Earth? What is the deep urge and drive that keeps you alive? And then I have one more point before we finish. That is, there is power in knowing Christ. Verse 10, verse 10 says, All I want is to know Christ and the power that raised yes, him yes. to life. I want to suffer, I think this is verse 11, I want to suffer and die as he did. Lastly, there is power in knowing Christ. Verse 10 says, all I want is to know Christ and the power that raised him to life, that resurrection power, to get up when life has knocked me down, that power when my money is funny and my fame mm, is gone, yeah. and it wouldn't do me any good yeah. anyway. That same power that raised him from the dead, that power when you are down to your last, Thank you, God. And you're at rock bottom. Mm. Lower than the low. Yeah. That power that comes in like a flood and refreshes you and restores you and renews you, that picks you up, that same power, that in spite of aches and pain yes. and the challenges yes. of growing old, in this life. Yes. <laughs> that same power that gives me life. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead. That same resurrection power I have in Christ. <coughs> if I was to ask you what I was asking you, and if your definition is based on external circumstances, even if it's based on some other person, if you think living a life of ease, doing what you want, will make you happy, I fear, my friends, you're sadly mistaken. Mm -hmm. Fulfillment in this life comes from knowing the that knowing Jesus Christ and realize knowing the one who created you and that he created you above all else, to have a personal relationship with him. My sisters and brothers this morning, as we close, Jesus asked a question in Matthew 16, 26. And I would ask you this morning, what good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul. Mm. What will you give in exchange for your soul? Jesus is saying, the wise person looks at everything in this life and measures it against the value <coughs> of knowing Christ. And the wise person says, all of is not worth my eternal soul. Won't you make Jesus Christ number one? He said, if you seek me first, if you put him first, all the other stuff will fall. fall in place. That's right. Our emotions mm. tell us, no way, do this, do that. I think one of the biggest problems we have, was saying it in Sunday school, and I didn't finish the statement in Sunday school. We are so busy listening to ourselves, 
when we ought to be talking to ourselves. We are listening to what Satan is bringing us when we ought to be telling him who I am in Christ. I want to challenge you. Don't base it on your circumstances. Don't even base it on your emotions. Everything might be going good for you right now, but hear me, my sisters and brothers, you might not need the Lord not right now. But I would ask you today, what does it profit you to gain all that stuff and lose the relationship? Lose Jesus Christ. Yeah. As we open the doors of the church, 